Hi and welcome to the next video on this Sound Megas Music Production Videos Acoustic Slash Studio Build. Now this is for a small studio, a uh, small room in my house, but we still need to understand a little bit about acoustics and in the previous videos I showed you how to make bass traps, so we'll be doing everything really. For this video I'm going to show you how to use REW, that's Room EQ Wizard. To use that piece of software you will need, in a perfect world, a sound card with multiple outs where you can route the output of say channel 5 or output 5 to the input of 5 to create a loop back inside the device. You will always also need an SPL meter, which I'll show you pictures of and some links of where you can buy them. And you will also need an acoustic measurement microphone, which aren't very expensive. You can get things like the ECM 8000 from Behringer or the PV PV2, which is the mic I'm using at the moment, and the mic I'll be using for all measurements. And they're about 60 euros. I'll put some links up for you. You can also get calibration files for other different types of mics that aren't specifically built for acoustic measurement so if you read the REW documents or go to their website um, I think on their website they have a page that just deals with um, other non-acoustic measurement microphone calibration files okay let's get started this is REW it's free to download if you go to the link that I've just shown you okay in this video what we're going to do is we're going to create a loopback inside your sound card. Why are we going to do that? We are doing that simply to create a calibration file. That calibration file will show us the frequency response of your sound card, which in any further readings that we take, so readings of the room, etc., they will be calibrated to that. Or that will be removed from the readings just so that the sound card doesn't affect any of the readings. We will also be setting some levels using the SPL meter and finally taking a reading. So let's go on with Okay, REW opens up like this. First thing you want to do is go to Preferences and then click on Preferences and it brings up the preferences box. Now if you've watched, and I advise that you do watch, the video called setting up a sound card for loopback, you'll know that I have my loopback set up on analog 5 out and analog 5 in. So as you can see I've selected it here. I could select anything, but in this case because we're testing for a loopback, that's what I've done. And I've just changed this one to line out. 44.1, keep control output max volume on. And yours might say 0 0.5, that's fine, but I just like it to be a little lower, that's all. Okay, so what we're going to do is make a calibration. So the first thing we need to do is hit calibrate. Great thing about REW is it comes up with these little help files. Read them. They should, they'll, they'll help you out. This, this video really is going to show you the process. If you want to go into the deeper physics and acoustic information, you'll need to read the help files. Okay, so what we're going to do now is send a 1 kilohertz tone through the sound card at minus 12 dB full scale. Where then you're going to use my sound card's internal mixer to, clack, to calibrate the audio, the input to that. So basically, and it does say um, on the next page that within six, mi within minus six dB, or within six dB is enough. But I want to get it nice and accurate. So if I hit next, there we go. At the moment, that's minus twelve dBFS, and this one I want to get to the same as that. As you see here, it says close to the output level, ideally within six dB. 
So this is the input level we're messing around with here. So let me just zero everything. So sorry, sorry, that's the output level. So I've just put the output level to zero dB, but it's also attached to the software playback. So as I raise this, you'll see it starting to come up. Now we want to get as close to minus 12 as humanly possible. Okay, that's about as high as that's going to go, so we'll just use this. Okay, let's see if it's a bit more accurate like this. There you go, minus 12, minus 12, well, point 0.1. Okay, so once you've done that, hit next. Okay, so what we've done there is we've taken the cal we we've matched the input and the output basically. So now what we're going to do is uh, measure the sound card. It's going to send a tone through the sound card, and it's going to just make sure that all levels are fine. It's green numbers we're looking for. Everything we want, everything in the green. That looks good to me. Okay, so when you've done it right, you should get something that looks similar to this. So that's the sound card calibration there. That's the frequency response of my RME 400, which looks pretty good to me. Even down at what? 2.5 kilo, 2.5 hertz. There's only a drop of three minus three dB. It drops off, it starts to drop off at about 60 hertz, but by the time you get down to 20 hertz, the threshold of human hearing, it's only dropped by 0 0.084 decibels. So it's quite a good response. And if you come up here, when you get past 4 hertz, 4 kilohertz, it starts to raise up and at its highest point, which is 10 kilohertz, it's 0 0.031 dB of, a disc, uh, uh, of an increase. So that's quite good. So if we go back to preferences and just come here, I just hit finish and select make cal and we'll just call this um, REW cal test. Call it whatever you want. Normally I put a date on but I've got too many at the moment so I'll just use this, and we just want to see it. Just say R E W Cal test again. You can see I've got a couple there with dates, and that's it. That's that's now loaded in. So anything we now do, we'll take that measurement into consideration. So the next thing we want to do is check the levels. But the first thing we must do is change this to our proper outputs, which is speakers R M E and which is actually analog one and two. So that's it, so that's our output and our input devices. So now we're going to test our levels. We don't want to test levels of a subwoofer, we want to test levels of full range speakers. So we select them there. Hit check levels. Now you can read this. Now this is where the SPL meter comes into play. What you need to do is have the SPL meter if it's a little Radio Shack Digital 1, you need to have it on uh, the range at 80. You want it on a slow response C weighting. And you need to have it pointing at the center of your speakers at exactly your listening position. Now, if you've watched the videos in the past, you should have your listening position set up to 38% of the length of your room with your equilateral triangle monitors angled at the appropriate angle. So now what we're going to do is send a minus 12 dBFS signal through the speakers straight at the SPL meter and we're going to mess around with again our volumes until we get the SPL reader to read 75 dB as noted down here. You see that?
So, next. As you can hear, we have uh, noise coming through. So I'm just going to um, set my SPL meter up and make the necessary adjustments to my volume to get my SPL meter reading 75 dB. And then I'm going to, as you can see here, next adjust the input volume either using RED or your sound card to get it to minus 18 dBFS, which is this one here. So you'll see me adjusting that here. Okay, so here we go. Oh, and by the way, I am balancing my SPL meter on a microphone stand. Okay, that's it now at 75 dB on the SPL meter. I'm now going to take the left channel to minus 18 dB FS. Okay, that's good enough for me. Okay. So the levels have been checked. That means we now have everything set up properly to take some proper measurements. So before we do that, you should always check, sorry, that mic meter the C-weighted SPL meter is unticked. So, we now have everything calibrated. Okay, the final thing is to take a breathing of the room. So we hit measure, make sure it's from 0 to 20,000 and put the mic again to your listening position and then hit start measuring and again we're looking for green numbers so I'm just going to do that now okay watch your ears it's going to um, go from 0 to 20,000 kilohertz so uh, if you've got headphones on take them off and if you've got monitors loud cover your ears Okay, that was perfect. Nice green numbers. And now, as you can see, we have a room measurement. So, here we have a reading of the room. As you can see, if we just look at it, you can immediately see some issues in the room as it is. Now, for instance, if we click on that, there's a hole. A nice trough there at 13.76 hertz although that's below our hearing so I don't know how much problems it's going to be 
but we're getting up to 20 there's another hole there there's another one there and 31 35.6 then there's a peak there there's a spike at 47.3 then we get some more spikes 66 90 122 then a nice big fall around about 156 hertz and so on and so forth as you can see up here now I'm not going to go into detail about reading these because they're complicated and it will be a whole course on its own really but basically what this shows you is um, the issues that you've got to deal with in your room now I'm going to do another reading but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two of the base traps, only two, there's no more than that in this room. There's two sitting in the room at the moment, but they're not in what I would call a useful position um, at the moment. They're obviously doing something, but and they're just standing on the floor, they're not correctly placed or anything like that. So I'm just going to place them in a bit more of an appropriate position, just on the wall, uh, on the floor, leaning against the wall. And I'll do another reading and then you can have a quick comparison. Just now this remember this is two base traps um casually placed. There's been no there's no science behind this. Um and we'll see if it kind of deals with any of these issues. Okay, I made another reading doing just what I said and here it is. Basically I've put a base trap to the left of each of the monitors which is actually a reflection point, but, well, to the left of the left monitor, to the right of the right monitor, just leaning up against the walls. So it's actually a reflection point, so I expected a change, but would you like to see how much change? So this is the original, that's the original reading, and I'll overlay the new blue one. Now look, as you can see, it's the blue one, yeah, we've got a new dip there, a new dip here, but we're, we're, it's not audible down there. But look at that, that green one there, at 13.7, still not audible, but it's been moved. Um, pretty similar there, those green, these green spikes, uh, troughs, have been flattened out a bit. This green trough's been flattened out a bit. See, so, again, you can see improvement straight away. Look at all this green here, all of that green's been removed. Um, although there's all this blue here. So you can already see an improvement just by adding two base traps randomly. So I've got another, at least another 13 to go in here. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Now, if you use this software, the most valuable um, things to show people if you're asking for feedback and help are the SPL and phase. And you could probably show an all SPL. You can even average the responses. There's the average response of those two. But SPL and phase, the impulse response. And some people will ask for the decay. You've got to generate that. There's the decay there. But mostly it's the waterfall. And you'll have to reset the settings and stuff for the waterfall to get it more accurate. But as you can see, the waterfall corresponds to the SPL, really. That's the peaks. That's the K time, 300 milliseconds. Okay, that's it. Not really that difficult. It is a bit finickety, and, but you'll get there in the end. Just follow the video a couple of times. I hope I've been slow enough to explain it properly. And I hope you learned something from this. Okay, I shall see you in the next video. Bye for now.